a long intro, you guys read the title. Today, we're going to talk about some of my unpopular opinions about your favorite pet tubers. Popular opinion number one, none of them really like hedgehogs. Not necessarily their individual hedgehogs, but just hedgehogs as a species. In fact, Emma Lynn Sampson and Emily Rose have actually spoken about the fact that they likely will own another hedgehog after their current one passes, not necessarily because they hate their current hedgehog, just because they realized that hedgehogs as a species weren't ideal for them, which again is completely fine. I think a lot of people assume that when you rehome an animal or when you decide that you don't want to keep an animal anymore, it means that you didn't do enough research in the initial stages, but I think it's important to address that owning an animal in practicality is so different than researching them, and sometimes there's no other way to learn than actually trying it and figuring out that certain species aren't the best for you. Happened in the early stages of pet tube when it was so common to buy three or four animals every single week is that a lot of people ended up getting hedgehogs. For one, I think they're absolutely adorable and they look very exotic. I'm not gonna lie, I watch a lot of videos just because there's hedgehogs on the thumbnails. When I was first getting into animals, hedgehogs just seemed so exotic and different and I was extremely captivated by them and by extension, anyone who owned them. I think a lot of pet tubers continue to keep their hedgehogs because hedgehogs are animals that are fairly low maintenance and are very affordable. Yes, their initial setup can be quite expensive, and when you're completely new to animals in general, hedgehog care can seem a little bit overwhelming, but for a lot of these pet tubers who are very experienced and have a lot of animals, I think hedgehogs definitely fall on the lower end of care. The quality of care, just the things that a hedgehog needs to thrive, is a lot easier and more attainable. For example, four square feet is what we consider the minimum in the US. Of course, other countries have higher standards, but that's pretty much the same size that people recommend for a hamster. So it's not a huge amount of space. Um, their diet is actually really easy and straightforward, especially if you're keeping reptiles and already have a lot of insects. And again, they don't really need that many things on a monthly basis, so you're not going to be spending tons and tons of money. Popular opinion number two. A lot of people got into aquariums, especially saltwater tanks, after seeing Taylor Nicole Dean. I want to be a little bit careful about how I word this because I'm not saying that people necessarily copied Taylor and got saltwater because of her, more of the fact that she kind of inspired a lot of people and a lot of the people in pet tube just don't seem that interested in saltwater as she does. When she was first growing, one of her main passions was fish keeping, specifically saltwater aquariums. I myself was so obsessed with her channel because I thought her aquariums were beautiful and I was so fascinated by the idea of having a piece of the ocean in your living room. She also had so many fish that were just so personable and the way she edited it and everything like that made it look like these little bugs had, oh my god, I just called them bugs. I meant to say that these little fish had such huge personalities. In fact, her cowfish cheese is still one of the most famous animals on her channel. I think different people are gifted with different animals, and I think Taylor just has a natural knack for taking care of aquariums. I know before she was actually studying marine biology in school, I think, so I think fish keeping and everything like that just came really easy to her, and in all her videos, her passion really showed through, and she honestly made the hobby seem quite straightforward. I know before Taylor, I couldn't watch any fish keeping videos without feeling completely overwhelmed, but whenever I watched her content, it always seemed like aquariums was something super manageable and even I considered starting my own. I think when other pet tubers saw this, they probably were inspired in the same way, and I'm sure the fact that Taylor's channel was very successful mainly because of a lot of her saltwater fish kind of added to the fact, and I felt like I saw a lot of creators kind of diving into the aquarium hobby and saltwater aquariums, and very shortly after getting out of it, I think the aquarium hobby is just really expensive and the more research I've done, I know that it's super time consuming and something that I definitely don't want to get into. So I think a lot of the pet tubers kind of came to the same conclusion because a lot of them have either stopped their tanks or just simply don't talk about it that much anymore because I guess it's not something that they're interested in. I'm not a huge fan of adding in disclaimers, but I think it is fairly necessary. <laughs> hey. These are called unpopular opinions for a reason. You can't necessarily prove them right or wrong. These are just things that I think to be true. If you guys agree, be sure to let me know, but if you don't agree, that's completely fine as well. No pressure. Hey! <laughs> okay, my next opinion is that a lot of these pet tubers have outgrown some of their animals. Now, I know the idea of outgrowing an animal seems really terrible, 
but it's kind of inevitable. As people, we grow every single day and maybe the same hobbies and things that interested you a year ago is something that doesn't interest you now. When it comes to animals, it's a lot more serious. If you're no longer interested in knitting, just put away your yarn and your needles and you never have to worry about it. But if you decide that you're not interested in animals anymore, you can't just ignore the issue because these are living beings who depend on you. I just feel like over the years, a lot of the pet tubers have just gone in different interests and some of the animals that they used to own, they're just not passionate about them anymore. I feel like Emma Sampson is a good example of this. I don't think that she neglects any of her animals by any means, but she used to have quite a few different small pets and she rarely showcases them on her channel anymore because she's expressed that they're not really her interest. Instead, she's shifting a lot more to reptile and educational content and her reptile care is honestly amazing. I think nearly all of her enclosures are bioactive and life planted, which is incredible. I think because of the long lifespan of some of these animals, it's pretty normal that a lot of the pet tubers have different interests in animals than when they first started out and again I always say this but when pet tube was in its very early stages I think it was so normal to accumulate so many animals so maybe not all the species got the amount of research that they should so there's certain species that just don't work for a creator's lifestyle anymore. This transitions well to my fourth and popular opinion which is that more creators would rehome animals if it wasn't so stigmatized. Now I completely understand the stigma of rehoming animals Honestly, it's very stressful for an animal for you to uproot them from everything that they know and are used to and just put them in a new environment. When you rehome an animal, you don't have control over how they're going to be treated. And whenever you bring an animal, you are making a lifetime commitment to them. So rehoming is in a way backing out of their commitment. However, I have always been very positive about rehoming. I think there's a different thing between supporting rehoming and encouraging people to do it. I don't think that people should be encouraged to rehome their pet, but I do think that if a decision that they come to, they should still be supported. I think like I was saying before, a lot of creators have just outgrown some of their pets or there are other species that they've bought and have realized that they just aren't the right fit for them. And I think if rehoming didn't have such a negative stigma, that more YouTubers would take the approach and rehome more of their animals. I think Pickles Pets is pretty much the only YouTuber that I know that voluntarily rehomed a majority of her animals. I know that a few creators here and there have done it. I also think Emzotic is a good example. Now, in her situation, I don't think that she voluntarily rehomed the animals. It's a very serious topic and I don't want to discuss it and kind of um, dilute anything that she said. She has some videos about her unique situation, but she ended up leaving the majority of her pets and kind of starting over with a few smaller species. Or not smaller species, just less species. And she's talked about how she's so much more happy having less animals to care for. I think a part of me thinks that a lot of these creators would actually love to have an opportunity where they could just start their collections over, especially now that they know what animals they're most interested in. I also think that when PetTube were first starting, the standard of care was very low. Most people were just keeping them in bare minimum enclosures, and I think that we've done a great job at breaking that stigma. I think Tyler Ruggie literally up graded his like two foot corn snake into a four by two by two enclosure, which is a 120 gallon enclosure, which I think is amazing. So I love that pet tubers are starting to give their animals a lot more than the bare minimum. But at the same time, I think that's really hard to do when you have such a huge number of animals. Yeah, I think given the opportunity, a lot of pet tubers would kind of like to minimize their species or at least start over with a couple. I think it's hard because you obviously grow attached to every single animal that you have but I can definitely see so many pet tubers at least rehoming one or two animals. Jumping off of that, my next unpopular opinion is that a lot of pet tubers actually regret the number of animals that they have. Again, not specific species that they bought or specific animals, just the fact that a lot of them seem to have so many. I feel like more pet tubers wish that they had less species, again, especially as they're doing upgrades and different things like that. I just feel like you can tell that a lot of them are kind of overwhelmed by how many animals need upgrades and changes. I think in the beginning stages of pet tube, having a lot of animals was just so over glamorized. And I think that's not very realistic for a lot of people. I think even if it's something you can do, it's not something that you want to do every single day. For example, there's some days that I could probably care for 100 animals and be completely fine and work for 14 hours and enjoy it. And then there's other days where I want to watch TV for 4 hours and I just want to do the bare minimum when it comes to my animals. 
I think over the years, I feel like in especially their content, you can tell that a lot of pet tubers just seem exhausted just from their day-to-day -day chores. And I think it's really sad because we as pet tubers have more interest in just animals. Animals are a huge part of my life, but they're definitely not all of it. And I feel like for a lot of pet tubers, animals have completely taken over. And in a way, I kind of feel bad for them. Okay. And my very last unpopular opinion is that a lot of them try to avoid controversy by not really making care videos. I remember when PetTube was first starting out, there was literally care videos coming out left and right. It was pretty much you would get a new species, do an introduction, and then your next video was a care video on the species you just got. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense because if you just got an animal, you're not really giving your own care advice. You're kind of just regurgitating information that you found from somewhere else. So I feel like the videos were a little pointless and a lot of them were actually pretty misinformed because not everyone was doing the amount of research that they could. But now it's kind of gone to the opposite side where I never see care videos and I never really see YouTubers give a clear definitive answer when it comes to care advice. I think Tyler Ruggie is a very good bad example of this because he constantly is working on care videos and I think it's amazing. All of his care videos are very well researched and very thorough and he touches on every aspect of care. I love how he touches on what he does and what the different opinions are. And I think there's a lot of things that he's learned from experience that isn't just regurgitated care guides. For example, his bearded dragon video, he actually talks about housing them on substrate, which most care guides would tell you is a huge no, but it's something that he's done for a while and he has a lot of experience with. And I think he spoke really well on the subject. Same thing about his bioactive hedgehog enclosure. There's very few people, especially in the US doing it. And for him to make a very thorough video, I thought was really helpful. However, there are so many pet tubers who just never make care videos and never talk about it. Now, I completely understand where they're coming from because I don't really have any care videos on my channel. Care videos take a long time to make. They are often met with a whole new audience that you get. And it's open yourself up to a lot of criticism because whenever you give facts, people can disagree with it. It's really nice to make opinion videos because if anyone disagrees with me, I just get to wiggle my way out and say that it's an opinion. But when you're making care videos and giving out definitive facts, it's really hard to make sure that everything you're doing is well researched. That being said, I think there's a huge need for care videos, especially as there's so many old care videos on YouTube that are dated. And I think we just need updated ones with higher standard of care. I constantly come across old care videos saying bearded dragons can be in a 40 gallon enclosure or leopard geckos can be in a 10 and just different things like that, which we've obviously learned more from. So I wish that these YouTubers, as they're improving their standard of care, which I think is amazing, I wish there were just a couple more updated care guides coming out to kind of correct all the old misinformation. Clint's Reptiles, for example, he has so many incredible informational videos, but in every single one of those videos, he never actually talks about care. And even if it's a species that he owns, he very rarely actually shows their enclosure. Again, I think this is just a way of avoiding controversy. He does give tips by saying that they need a very large enclosure or a reasonably sized enclosure, but I just want actual numbers because I think those numbers are really important for people who use YouTube as their primary way of researching. Feeding videos, pet routines are all very entertaining, but they're not educational or informative, and I wish we had a mixture of both. Okay, so those are just some of my unpopular opinions on your favorite pet tubers. Let me know what are some of your unpopular opinions and let me know if you agree or disagree with what I said.